Hello, hello, welcome to lesson 14. Today, we are going to talk about objects, which are also referred to as classes. And you may have heard of this term, object-oriented programming, before. So this is supposed to be one of the more difficult topics to wrap your head around, but I'll try my best to make it as simple as possible. So an object is basically an item that has properties. A long time ago, I used to play this popular game called MapleStory, and I think that this would be a great example. So when you first play this game, you have to create a character. You will have the options to customize the hair, the eyes, the name, and etc. Once you have selected the properties of your choice, the character is created. This creation phase is called the initialization. Once the character is initialized, you will be able to walk around in the game with the properties that you have assigned. So basically, an object is just a container that holds properties that are stored in variables. Objects are very useful, especially for an online game. As you can imagine, there will be over 1,000 players walking around on the map. And for each of those characters, we'll have to keep track of the properties. For example, here we have two characters, and both of them have two properties, the name of the character and also the color of their eyes. So in this example, we only need two variables for each character, so we have a total of four variables. But imagine if we had over 100 of these characters in our game. And this will get very messy because now we'll have 100 characters and two variables for each of them. So then we'll have a total of 200 variables in our code. So instead, we should use an object to contain these variables. So instead of having 200 of these variables, now we will only use 100 objects, which will represent the characters. And through this character object, we can access the character properties. More specifically, we can access the name and the eyes through that object. Cool, hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, keep watching. We're going to do some examples and hopefully that will clear things up. Creating an object in Python is very simple. To create an object, we have to start the statement off with the word class, followed by the name of the object. In this example, since we're dealing with characters, we can name the class character. One thing to note is that the first letter is capitalized. This is a style thing where generally when you create a class, the first letter should be capitalized. Next, we end the statement with a colon. And then basically what we want to do is indent. So classes can have functions within them, and we will go over this in a separate video. But for now, we will need to create a function for the initializer, and this is where we set the properties for the class. So all we have to do is def to define the function. The name of the initializer has to be underscore underscore init underscore underscore and every class will have this. Next, you open the parentheses to provide the parameters, and every function within a class will always start with one parameter called self. So this term self can get a bit confusing, but another way to think about this is to think of yourself as an object. And when you refer to a property on yourself, for example, my hair color, I will say my hair is black, or my eyes are dark brown. And notice how when I describe these properties, I always say my. So in this case, when you're dealing with an object, this self implies possession. So in this example, we have two properties for the characters, the name and the eyes. So basically what we want to do in the initializer is do self.name equals tiger and self.eyes equals black. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying that this object has this variable called name and we want to set it to tiger. And we also want this object to have a variable called eyes and we want to set it to black. And if we want to add more properties to this object, we will just do self dot, and then we give it a name for that property. For example, we can do self dot hair equals long. And now this character object has a property called hair, which is set to long. Awesome, so this is basically how you create an object in Python. One thing that I want to point out here is that the name, eyes, and hair is always tiger, black, and long. But in a video game, we don't want every character to have the same name, eyes, and hair. Uh, so what we can do is we can customize it. So like a function, we can add more parameters. So in this case, we can add a comma after the self. And here we can add in parameters for the hair, for the name, and the eye color. So let's do hair, eyes, and name. So now instead of putting tiger, we can put name. And for eyes, we can put eyes. And then finally for the hair, we can put hair. So now we can create different characters with a different name, eyes, and hair. Cool, so now let's do some code. So here I created the class and I called it character. Then in here I created the function init and it takes in self as the first parameter. Now we have the name, eyes, and hair. And here we set the properties. So self.name equals name, self.eyes equals eyes, and self.hair equals hair. To actually use the object, 
we have to create it. So first, let's create a variable to store this object. So let's call it player1 equals. Now we have to use the name of the object. So in this case, we call it character. So copy character and put it here. Now open the parentheses. So if you look here, Replit is very smart and it noticed that we created this character object. And right here, it says character, bracket, name, eyes, and here, which basically matches the initializer. Except for one thing, it's missing the self. So basically the self parameter is only used inside the function. So when we call the initializer for the class, we don't have to pass anything for self. We just have to pass it the other parameters. So in this case, let's pass it the name. So let's name it tiger. And for the eyes, we had black. And for the hair, we had long. So now we basically create this character object. So now let's click run. Nothing happens because we didn't really do anything with our code. So let's hit enter and type print. And now let's print out player one just to see what it is. So let's hit run. Here, as you can see, it says underscore underscore main. And here we see character object at zero x blah, blah, blah. Basically what we have here is that this player one is a character object. We don't really have to worry about this zero x seven f blah, blah, blah. But basically what happens when you create an object is that the computer has to allocate some memory to create this object. And here it's just telling you where that memory is located. But don't worry too much about this. If you're interested, you can read more about it. But for this lesson, it's not important. But anyways, now that we have this player object, we can get the properties from it. So to get the property, all we have to do is put a dot after the variable. So player one dot, and then now we can get a property. So for example, if you wanted the name, we'll do dot name. And now if we click run, you're gonna see tiger. And if we wanted the eyes, just replace the name with eyes. And now click run, and here you see black. And if you want it here as well, put here there, and now click run. So now basically, as you can see, this object is a container that holds these three properties, the name, eyes, and hair. And the cool thing here is now we can create another player. So now we can do player2 equals character, and the name is Bob with green eyes, and let's say short hair. So now let's copy line eight and paste it. And now let's put player two. And now let's click run. And as you can see, we got long hair for player one and short hair for player two. Cool, so if we didn't use an object to represent these characters, we would have to create six variables in total to store these variables. And as you can imagine, this can get very messy as we create more characters. But as you can see, by creating these character objects, our code is cleaned up a lot and it's very intuitive to get a property from an object. Awesome. So before we end the lesson, I just want to do a quick example of how we can use a class with the problem that we solved last lesson. So in the previous lesson, we represented each fruit as a string. Instead, we can create a class called item and inside that class, it will store the name of the object and also the price associated with it. So let's do that. First, let's create a class and call it item. And then after that, we have to define the initializer. So define underscore underscore in it underscore underscore and here we have to pass self as the first parameter and then here we want to give it a name and also a price and now we end it with a colon and then next we just do self dot name equals name and self dot price equal price cool so now let's get rid of these lines and now all we have to do is total plus equal item dot price so here we're grabbing this price property from the item object so now all we have to do is update these inputs. So that way it is an item object. So let's copy item and paste it here and then open the parentheses. And here, as you can see, the first parameter is a name and the second one is a price. Put a comma and an apple was $3. And now we close the parentheses and now we do the same for banana. And now for Vincent, we should also turn it to an item, but we'll just set the price to $0. So the reason why we want Vincent to be an item is if you remember when we talked about lists, I said that a list should only have one type. And for this list, we're only putting objects of type item. So we shouldn't have a string in here or else our code would break. So that's why we're gonna make Vincent an item. And now let's click run. And as you can see, the code is working just like before. But the only difference is now we're using an item object, which better represents the data that we are working with. Cool. I hope that this lesson made sense. For the next lesson, we're going to talk more about objects. So make sure to like this video and subscribe so that way you don't miss out on the next lesson.